Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mama Wears Athleisure. I am your host, Mariella de Santiago, a first time mom. We focus on all things mom with tips to help make life easier and more organized for all you mamas out there. Hi, today I'm here with Dr. Amanda, who's going to share a little bit about herself and talk to us about teething. My name is Amanda and I am a board certified pediatric dentist in the Bay Area. So I went to University of the Pacific for my undergraduate training and I also went there for dental school for six years. And then I went to do my pediatrics training at Cincinnati Children's Hospital for about two years after that. I'm in private practice and I also volunteer to teach at the pediatric dental clinic at the dental school. Oh my gosh, you do so much. I try. <laughs> I wanted to talk about teething because it is such a, a big topic with moms and it starts at various ages for little ones. My son started at about six months and he is now nine months and of course still teething. So we get like two week breaks in between, I feel like before we start going through the whole process again. But would you mind sharing about how old a baby typically starts teething? So it sounds like your son is right on average because the average age to start to get teeth is about six months old. That is an average. So some kiddos are earlier and some are much later, even after one years old, before they start to get their first teeth. That can also be an indicator to remember for later on that their adult teeth may come in earlier, later, if they're getting their baby teeth earlier or later than that average. But if you have any concerns about when your child's baby teeth are coming in, I would definitely check with the pediatric dentist. What are some signs and symptoms that we would typically see when a baby is starting to teeth? Again, not all babies go through the same teething symptoms. There are even some cases where some babies don't have teething symptoms, believe it or not. And this can even vary between siblings too. So it, there's a whole spectrum of symptoms that you can experience. I think one of the most common ones that parents find is that they start to get fussy and you're like, wait, what's going on now? There's always new milestones that are happening at that age. Fussiness is definitely a common one. Swollen or tender gums is another really big one. There can even be bleeding or bruising, but that tends to happen more with the baby molars that are in the back. And they also may want to start putting everything in their mouth and you may see a lot of drool. <laughs> so that would also lead to changes maybe in their eating or sleeping. So a lot of times they'll be waking up more at nighttime because that's when they tend to do a lot of their growing, including with their teeth growing in. So this can lead to crying, a little bit of a grumpier temperament. It's likely due to the discomfort from the teeth that are coming in. But if they do have symptoms such as coughing, congestion, vomiting, diarrhea, or a fever over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, then you want to check with their pediatrician because that may be something other than the teething. I'm glad that you mentioned about that. All the symptoms can vary from child to child because the first time that my son was teething, the only thing that I noticed was that he was waking up at night. He was sleeping through the night and all of a sudden we were waking up and it wasn't a leap according to my ass. Yes. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, that he was hungry because he was able to sleep through the night. He didn't fit any of the symptoms that I, of course, Googled because that's what we all do, <laughs> except for that fussiness in the middle of the night. And I just didn't understand until one day I was like, oh, I can feel his teeth coming in. Good. Yeah. I know that's such a common symptom that a lot of babies experience. And parents are like, wait, I thought we were sleeping. What's going on now? So a lot of times it is those teeth getting ready to come in. With that, what are some things that can help a alleviate the pain, whether it's during the day or at night. Definitely. So I have lots of options. I'm going to try and go into as many of them as I can here, because I know this is something that's going to help them hopefully sleep through the night a little bit better. And that parents are always wondering about. So the first one is just even a gentle massage of their gums during this time with your fingers, or you can even use a cool spoon from the refrigerator. But once the teeth do start to come in, you don't want to use a spoon anymore because you don't want to risk damaging the teeth that have come in, but anything that's really cold is actually going to really help with any pain or tenderness that they're experiencing. Another thing is because they might be drooling a lot more, you also want to make sure that you're wiping the drool off of their face because I have seen babies that get really bad rashes on top of their teething pain. So you definitely want to try to avoid that if you can. One thing I really like are the teething mittens that you can put on the baby's hands. Um, those are really great to give them something to put in their mouth. So there's the munch mitt or the 
and nubby. And again, you can even throw that in the refrigerator too. So it's a little bit cool when you first give it to them. And then depending on their age, you can also try chilled foods, teethers, or even a cold damp cloth. You don't have to get fancy. Just put a cold cloth, like a washcloth in the refrigerator, and then you can tie a little knot in it, give it to them and have them kind of chew on that as well. I will do a disclaimer for teethers. You want to avoid any ones that are plastic or filled with any liquid just because the risk of any chemicals or also if it breaks, you don't know what kind of liquid is in there. So I would definitely try to avoid those if you can. Um, one of my favorite teethers is from Snoofy Bee. It's called the Brushing Buddy and it actually helps with brushing too once the teeth start to come in, but it has a little spot that they can chew on it um, when they're teething. So it's kind of a double duty teether if you want to invest in one of those. And this also will help keep their mouth open later on when you start to brush their teeth, which is really great. Another thing that I also like to recommend to parents are the baby friendly popsicles. Check with your pediatrician about when you can start to introduce those solids, but on average, it's about four to eight months. Um, so that would be often the time that they're starting to get those baby teeth in. You do want to try to avoid adding any additional sugar, but you can do fruits like bananas, strawberries, blueberries, different things like that. Great anti-inflammatory ingredients are turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, you can just add a little bit of that, blend it up, and then you can either make a baby popsicle or pop it in an ice cube tray as well. An even more natural one is if you are breastfeeding, you can try freezing your breast milk in an ice cube tray, and then you can take one of those out, mash it up a little bit and put it in a mesh feeder. So that way it's not only cold, but it also has your great ingredients from your breast milk. That's also going to kind of do double duty for your baby when they're going through this time. If you are nursing. It's also helpful to drink chamomile tea because it has a lot of soothing ingredients that you're actually going to pass on to your baby as well. Or you could even take that cool washcloth that we mentioned earlier, dip it in some cold chamomile tea, and then give that to your baby to kind of chew on as well. I will also say once the teeth come in, you do want to start brushing their teeth right away. Even when they're teething, you definitely want to make sure you're still brushing because if we're getting any plaque and bacteria left on the teeth or the gum, they may also get gingivitis or gum inflammation at the same time. So then they may have extra pain from the gingivitis. So you definitely want to make sure you're still trying to brush even when they're teething because that can make symptoms worsen. Those are all such great ideas and so many ideas that I didn't even think about or know about like the chamomile tea. Yes. I'm definitely going to be trying all of those. I, <laughs> I have the list of, you know, doing the ice cube in the mesh tea there. My little one doesn't seem to show that he's really in pain during the day. It's more at, at night in the middle of the night when he's like, like waking up. <laughs> oh, I know. So at nighttime, I mean, trying to go back to the five S's, I'm sure a lot of your parents are familiar with that. The swaddle, shushing, the side or stomach position, swinging and the sucking. So even a pacifier during this time can be really soothing for them. And then referring back to those alleviation tips you can try. And then if it's really bad, especially at nighttime, I do recommend double checking with the pediatrician. Sometimes babies do need a little bit of Motrin to get through the night when they're cutting or the teeth are breaking through that gum tissue as well. I'm glad that you mentioned the uh, Motrin or the Tylenol to be able to give them. I don't know if you are familiar with the Highlands teething tablets. What are your thoughts on some of those like gels and teething tablets that are over the counter? The FDA has issued several warnings about in certain things. We definitely recommend avoiding any teething jewelry as well as any teething gels, topicals, lozenges, things like that. A lot of it is not regulated. And a lot of them also have some chemicals that can actually be dangerous for your baby. The gels and specifically the topical anesthetics, they can actually affect the dispersing of the oxygen in your baby's blood and can lead to a life-threatening condition. So we definitely recommend avoiding those numbing gels or creams. It's just the amount that you can give them. It can become toxic really quickly. Teething jewelry. For example, I know that the amber necklaces are really common and I always get so worried when I see those on babies because not only is it a choking hazard, there's a strangulation risk and there's also risk of infection or injury to the mouth. And the claim behind the amber necklaces is actually that the succinic acid is going to help as it have an analgesic effect, just like maybe Motrin would. However, in order for the amber to release that, your baby would have to reach 400 degrees Fahrenheit, according to science, which obviously is not going to happen. I think if parents like that, it is a placebo effect, but it is not recommended by the 
FDA and there are a lot of dangers with all of those. I would definitely check with a pediatric dentist about any specific questions, but I don't usually recommend the Highlands either. Thanks for sharing all that. I see those necklaces and that's instantly what I think about how they're so small and if it breaks, like how your little one can choke on those beads. Yes. Yeah. So I definitely recommend avoiding those if you can. You mentioned to start having babies' teeth brushed either as soon as they are out. Should parents be using any sort of toothpaste or is it just water or one of those little like finger brushes? What's the best to use? So it's kind of up to you and your baby. There's so many wonderful options out there. Actually, even before the teeth come in, like I mentioned, gently rubbing their gums, even just with your finger, just to get them comfortable with you being in their mouth at least twice a day. So once in the morning, once at night, and you may be doing this more often when they're teething as well. And then you can start to introduce some sort of toothbrush. So some parents find great success early on with the little silicone finger brush, which is also great. But once the teeth start to come in, you do want to switch over to a soft bristle baby toothbrush because that's going to remove the plaque a lot better from the teeth. And you want to start off with a smear amount of toothpaste. So there's lots of different brands out there. I definitely definitely say try to avoid any that have the ingredient sodium lauryl sulfate SLS because that can actually lead to canker sores and a lot of people get reactions to that ingredient Um, and so you just want to put that tiny smear size amount on a toothbrush and like I said it's more about establishing the habit early on and disrupting the plaque and because your baby's so small and it's so new to them early on they're going to be wiggly so it, it does take a lot of time to get them comfortable with it but keep trying it does get a lot easier And even if you just get five seconds in there with the toothpaste, just to introduce it to them, you're doing a lot to help teach your baby that this is part of their oral hygiene routine. We started with ours as soon as we noticed that his were breaking through and now he kind of looks forward to it. He doesn't bite me on it or, you know, keep his mouth closed. He... (laughs) He does try to take the toothbrush away from me, which yes. I'm okay with. <laughs> so sweet. We also love recommending having two toothbrushes, one for them to kind of play with. And even if they're playing on one side of their mouth, it kind of opens the mouth so you can brush on the other side as well. So that's a great trick. And also even giving them one of those teethers to play with while you're brushing on the other side is a really great way to get in their mouth too. For the toothpaste, would you recommend fluoride-free toothpaste? So the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry does say it's okay to to give them fluoride as soon as the teeth come in, as long as you're using that smear size amount. The one disclaimer is if they're swallowing the toothpaste, they can get a tummy ache from it. So some parents prefer to wait until they're better at spitting before introducing the fluoride. I do say if you choose to go with a non-fluoride toothpaste, you just want to make sure that it has hydroxyapatite in it. Some common brands are Risewell or Boca. The official recommendation is try to get your child used to fluoride as soon as you can. That's- it's so informative. One more question. If kids are still, if babies are still being fed through the night, or if that's something that's kind of being comforting for them while they're teething, what should parents take into consideration as far as their care for their teeth? So there is the risk of what we call baby bottle cavities, but this can be from any sort of milk. And it's not necessarily just that you're giving them the milk. It's more the duration of exposure. So the more frequently you're exposing them to the milk, the saliva doesn't have as much time time to sort of rebalance the pH and sort of protect the teeth from cavities. So we recommend if you can't brush, if you can at least get that wet washcloth to wipe the majority of the milk off of their teeth. Another great option are xylitol wipes, which is safe for babies as well. A common brand is Spiffy wipes, and you can just keep those in your purse too, or you can keep them right by their crib at nighttime just to wipe their teeth off one or two times after giving them the milk. And that's a really great way of getting the majority of the milk off of their teeth and kind of protecting them after they're doing that feeding. Do you have any other tips, suggestions, or recommendations for parents? I think the only other plug I'll give is once the teeth are in contact or touching each other, you do want to try to introduce flossing. And those little floss sticks tend to be the easiest ones for parents to get in their really tiny mouths with. A lot of time we can't get x-rays until they're closer to four or maybe even five years old. So if they are getting cavities in between their teeth, we may not even be able to diagnose it until that age. Also introducing flossing as early as you can is really great as well. Thanks. And actually, uh, one more question. So Typically, how long can we expect kids to be teething for? You mentioned that they start around four to eight months, but 
how long would they go? So each tooth as it comes in, the symptoms may last only a few days or it can last up to a few weeks. So again, that general timeline is around three to six months. They may start to be a little bit fussy or have those swollen gums. And then that's when the first teeth are growing into the mouth. And then six to 12 months is when the first teeth will actually break through. The baby incisors in the front are pretty sharp, so they can come in relatively quickly. And then for the next year, you're going to start to see the baby molars and the canines. And I will say with the molars, it does take longer for them to come through the gum tissue because they are bigger teeth. But usually by two and a half, three years old is when they'll finish getting that last set of baby molars. So you can expect 20 teeth total. So that'll be 10 on the top and 10 on the bottom. All of that sounds so painful. That makes me hurt for them because (laughs) especially with those molars, I can already imagine how painful it is for them. The molars tend to be the hardest from what I've seen, but usually by that time they are eating. So you can give them a lot of those options that we talked about to help soothe them during that time as well. And then one last thing I wanted to mention is we usually recommend coming into the dentist within six months of their first teeth coming in or by their first birthday. A lot of people still think it's that three-year-old mark once all their teeth come in, but we do recommend coming in sooner so we can help you through that teething time, go over growth and development, make sure everything is progressing normally, and also to answer any additional questions that parents have. Thanks for all of that. Super informative. So helpful. I feel like I learned a lot that I didn't know. So I really appreciate you taking time to share all of your knowledge with us. My pleasure. Hopefully it helps some parents so they don't have to spend all that time on Google. (laughs) I know going down a rabbit hole and then learning everything that they probably didn't, didn't apply to them. (laughs) Thank you for listening. Tune in next week for our next episode. You can find us on Instagram for more updates and tips. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts and give us a review if you like us.